Today I'll be changing the spark plugs on a 2007 Ford Focus. There's a number of good YouTube videos out there that also show changing spark plugs on similar model focuses, but I thought it'd be good to do one for the two liter engine Duratec that sits inside this car. Uh, it's really easy routine maintenance that most anyone can do uh, once you have the correct tools. So to give an overview of everything that we're going to need to do the spark plug change, uh, first things first, I'm using uh, Ford Motorcraft spark plugs here. Uh, in this case, they're the SP478 uh, application. There's a number of different spark plugs that'll work. Uh, I like to try to stick with OEM as much as possible with vehicles, and especially with spark plugs, because there are some horror stories out there of of some third-party spark plugs that, while they might have been on clearance or on a good discount, they simply uh, had some issues with uh, being in the engine. So good news by sticking with Motorcraft, you know that it's going to be backed by Ford as that's the vehicle that's going to be going into. Um, let's see. Next thing that's important to uh, point out is having a spark uh, a spark plug gap measurer. In this case, I have a coin uh, style. There's a number of different different kinds out there, some that have wire gauges that stick out. This is the cheapest. Uh, honestly, I think I got it for like 75 cents at the hardware store. It's a way that we can help measure uh, the spark plug gap, which I'll get into a little bit more. Uh, let's see. On the spark plug side, something that'll make the job easier going forward when it comes time to take the spark plugs back out is getting some anti-seize and as well as uh, some boot protector. This is dielectric grease. The anti-seize, actually there's a nice diagram, that's what goes in the threads of the spark plug to make sure that it doesn't stick inside the engine. The last thing you want is the spark plug to get stuck in there. And the dielectric grease here, let's move this into the light, uh, you can see that goes on the top portion of the uh, spark plug. That helps keep moisture out and helps keep the charge flowing through the spark plug uh, throughout the entire life. On the hardware side, uh, what we have is a simple socket wrench which we'll be using with an eight millimeter uh, socket. This is just needed to get one of the screws out that holds the spark plug boot in. Uh, let's see, we also have a torque. This is a larger torque wrench. We'll need that to be sure that the spark plug is torqued correctly going in. Uh, we also have the spark plug uh, five eighths uh, socket. So that's often standard with a lot of socket wrench sets. I also have an extender, uh, something that's really cheap to pick up at a hardware store. Helps you get down into the uh, into the socket, the, the area where the socket goes in the engine. And then also something that makes it real easy is a magnet, which we can use to help lift our socket up and out of the boot. Um, some also other things that I'm using to help keep the job a, a lot easier is a magnetic, uh, this is a, meant to go on your wrist, but helps keep ca uh, care of the screws and also gloves. Uh, just to help apply the different greases, as well as make sure that we don't get anything anywhere we don't want on our skin. So here we are looking into the engine bay, just to give a sense of where we're going to be working. Uh, you can see the four spark plug boots sitting there. So what we're going to ultimately do is take the screws off. You can see the little screws there. Take them out, uh, lift up the spark plugs, uh, spark plug boots, which gives us access to the spark plugs. A lot of times in my videos, I like to reference where... Uh, where things are in the owner's manual or, or what Ford recommends for each application. So if you look, let's see, if you look up on the hood, uh, yeah, the vehicle emission control information, uh, this is where it says, uh, gives info for the spark plug gap, spark plug gap, C spec book, uh, no other adjustments needed. So that doesn't give us a lot of information. And actually, if you crack open the owner's manual, uh, all it says is be sure to use a Ford certified dealer. So in that case, Go to the auto store, go to the dealer, have them recommend the correct uh, spark plug for, for uh, the Ford Focus. Again, there's a number of different ones out there. In terms of spark plug gap, uh, in general, it's recommended to be between 0.048 to 0.051, though I've heard folks say as high as 0.059. And so, so again, uh, referencing the spark plug, uh, the spark plug gap measure that's where that measurement uh, of the gap would come in. In the case of the spark plugs that I'm working with, these uh, are naturally uh, gapped at 0.048. I'm gonna let them sit there. I'm not gonna worry about readjusting them, but if you do need to readjust your spark plugs uh, in terms of opening up the gap, uh, really what, what's recommended is kind of gently wiggling and working the, uh, let's see, 
gently working the top of that spark plug up so that you're able to expand the gap. You want to be very careful and very slow with how you expand it because it's a lot easier to open than close. So you want to be very careful when you're adjusting that gap. So the first thing we're going to do is take a can of compressed air here and I'm just going to gently go over it and work out all the dust and grime that might be there. That way we're sure none of it gets into the spark plug hole. Next, I'm going to take the, that eight millimeter socket and the wrench and I'm going to just simply get in there and open it up. I'll actually loosen up all of these. Um, really not that difficult to open up. Just loosen them up and then I'll work them by hand and uh, open them up from there. Now as far as taking off the spark plug boots, they're on there pretty firm. They're actually made out of a little bit of a rubber component, so um, you just got to kind of give it, give it some force and there you go. So some of them can come off a little bit easier, others might take a little bit of work, uh, but in general you just go ahead and pull them up. You know, you practice these things so much for videos, and of course everything doesn't work when it comes to showtime. I had one of the rubber boots get stuck in the hole uh, on this guy, so you can see they kind of separated. Um, so what I did was, uh, I guess we'll go into what all's in the boot. So we have the uh, electric element here, that's what's sending the shock down. This is a rubber boot that just simply protects the spark plug and makes sure the connection is complete. And then we have a spring inside of it which helps carry uh, the connection and maintains, uh, um, uh, maintains connection with the uh, spark plug. So the boot got stuck in there. I just used pliers and I was able to kind of grip it there and yank it up. So I guess just a quick DIY tip in case you have your spark plug boot separate, um, that is a way that you can do it. So with the spark plug boots off, you can simply drape them off to the side as I did here. Just be careful because they do have the electrical connection. Um, but if you look into the hole, you'll see that there is the uh, spark plug sitting in there. So that's what we'll go after next. To prepare for that, uh, you simply want to take the spark plug uh, socket wrench, that's the 5 eighths, and connect it to the extender. I have it all connected to the uh, larger torque wrench as that makes the job a little bit easier, gives you more leverage. But you can also use a simple uh, socket wrench as well to do the initial uh, loosening. Remember, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So we're just going to simply turn them left and then take them out that way. So to take out the spark plugs, remember again, uh, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So we're going to turn this left or counterclockwise, simply just drop our um, our spark plug uh, uh, socket into there. And it's going to be a little bit tough with the first couple turns, but it gets easier. Um, sometimes there's going to be a little bit of grating noise. Don't worry, you're doing it fine. And just simply work it out until it gets loose. And so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to use this one as the demo. So actually here, I can just do this by hand. So you can hear some of that squeaking. It's a little bit nerve-wracking considering we're working right in the engine, so it's never, never a bad idea to check twice on what you're doing. So we're turning it left, 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 and it feels like it's pretty much out there. So I'm going to take out the socket, and this is where having the magnet comes in handy. Um, I'm going to just drop the magnet in there. I have, I have had folks, and I've done it too, where you put the socket in and you cut and you uh, try to try to put it kilter, but the easiest way really is uh, to use a magnet. It's I found this one for eight bucks at, at a Lowe's, so um, it makes the job a lot simpler. Just simply go down and take it out that way. So at this point it's good to compare the old spark plugs to the new just to see how things are going on inside the engine. Um, as you can see here, there actually isn't too much bad going on. This is the old plug, this is the new. Um, sometimes you'll see some carbon buildup on the top or you can see uh, an indentation uh, in the top part of the electrode. Uh, these indicate abnormal wear on the spark plugs and, and means that there might be uh, something else going wrong with the engine, but if they're looking just, you know, darkened and a little bit aged, that's a good thing. That means that they've been doing their job and just have been naturally er eroding away and you can use your new spark plug as a uh, way to compare and contrast. Another thing important to point out, you'll notice the new spark plug is a little bit longer. Don't panic. 
that's okay. Uh, again, the spark plug boots are designed with the spring so they can work with uh, uh, different lengths of spark plugs. So that's, that's okay if, if you have different lengths, that's fine. Uh, that's just how it's uh, designed and it, it'll still work with your engine application. So now we're going to go ahead and start to prep a spark plug for installation. So what we want to do first, this is, and again, there are two ways. One way that you can do is you apply the, uh, the dielectric spark plug grease to the top and you uh, put the anti-seize on the bottom, just freehanding it. That's fine. This is a way that I picked up uh, that makes it a little bit less messy of an application. So first we're going to do the dielectric on the top. Uh, again, you can find these at any real auto parts store. This is a dollar fifty pack, very easy to pick up and helps make sure the spark plugs are going to work. What we're going to do is apply the grease uh, covering the ceramic and the uh, top magnetic portion. So we're going to squeeze this on up. So as you see there, I just kind of sprayed a line and then I'm just going to take a finger and apply it around. Make sure everything's covered. It's okay to do it liberally. Uh, this packet is designed to apply for uh, up to eight spark plugs. So so that works out. So yep. And so it's okay to get it everywhere. Again, this the purpose of this grease is to lock out moisture and make sure that it gets a good connection with with the electric input. So there we go. Now, once we've applied the uh, dielectric grease to the spark plug, I go ahead and put it in the, sock, or, uh, the spark plug socket, and then I'm going to apply the anti-seize to the exterior. That keeps it a little bit less messy and means that you're able to get the grease where it's needed. So again, I'm going to take the uh, anti-seize and put it along the thread, liberally apply it along there, and then we'll be good to go. So with the spark plug now applied with the anti-seize, you can see I put it along the threads. I'm going to go ahead and put it back into the spark plug hole. So to do that, uh, I'm just going to very gently drop it down into the spark plug hole, uh, make sure that I'm not damaging the electrode or, or anything along there. So I'm going to go ahead and install the spark plug. So I have it in my socket. I'm going to very gently drop this down, making sure not to damage anything. And to make sure we don't do what's called cross-threading, which is where the spark plug threads aren't matching up with the engine, that can make the spark plug either jam or, uh, or you know, cause problems inside the engine, I'm actually going to turn the spark plug left, and as I do, I'm going to feel a slight click. That means that uh, the thread just passed where it's going to naturally line up, and I'm going to hand tighten it at first, not trying to force it with a wrench. That way I'm able to make sure that the socket or the uh, spark plug is going in correctly so it's going in nice now and then uh, once once you get this relatively tight you can go ahead and use you can go ahead and use a, uh, a, a regular wrench to tighten it up a little bit more and then finally finish it off with a torque wrench to make sure that it's properly tight so with the spark plug in there I grabbed the torque wrench the t proper torque for these spark plugs is 11 uh, 11 uh, pound feet of torque. So I have this. I have the torque wrench set to that. Just going to link it up. And I'll feel the click eventually. Right, right there. And there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same procedure with uh, the other three boots as well. And then we'll be ready to install, reinstall the boots and get this thing test firing. Now with the uh, spark plugs all in place, I'm going to go ahead and just work these boots back on. Um, they're relatively easy to get back on. So I'm just going to simply push them down, be sure the connection is there, and then work uh, these 8 millimeter screws back on as well. So now I've tightened everything down. I'm going to give it one last check on these 8 millimeter bolts. And then with that, we're going to go ahead and give it a test fire and make sure that everything is running clean. All right, so we're in the car. I'm going to go ahead and give her a test crank and let's see how she's running. Looking good. No check engine light.
and everything seems to be running all right. So that's it for the spark plug change. Feel free to subscribe and like the video as well as comment with any of your own spark plug experiences or request for upcoming videos. I have a number of fixes and routine maintenance coming up that I'll be sure to record. Another thing I forgot to mention, which I'll include as a text box in the video, is Ford recommends 100,000 miles uh, for your spark plug replacement. In my case, I went 90,000 because winter's coming up and I didn't wanna be out in the cold. So uh, just a heads up, 100,000 is the OEM. Feel free to go more or less. Uh, outside of that, thanks for watching and be, be sure to follow further along in the future for more videos.